thank you everyone for coming to share in this beautiful simcha. On behalf of Yehudalei, Tati, and Mami Zolgazinsan, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Suda, the Kavad, the Sim, Ksiva Sefer of Yehudalei. The Sefer was written by Huda, Leil and Ishmas, Papa and Mama, Zaidi and Babi. We all know the Messias Nefesh that all of our grandparents had to raise families of Torah and Yerushalayim. And Baruch Hashem, Tati and Mami can look around at all of us and see, it all, see that all the blood and sweat that their parents gave for Yiddishkeit was well worth it and it paid off Kefal Keflayim. We are an achas to them and they should be a melech yosha for us. The Sefer Torah was also written for a schutz refu shleima for Huda, Yehudalei ben Imi Merasi Rachaleo. Before I introduce the first speaker, I'd like to say a short vart and a bracha to Huda. The Pasuk in Pashas Vayelech, by the mitzvah of Ksiv Sefer Torah, says, Va'ato kisvu lechemes ashira azoiz v'lamda es b'nei Yisrael sima b'fiyam. And a few psukim later, that's when the Rabbani Shalom told Moshe Rabbeinu the tzivui of, of Ksiva Sefer Torah, the mitzvah of Ksiva Sefer Torah. A few psukim later, it says that when Moshe Rabbeinu actually sat down to write a Sefer Torah, it says, Vayichtiv Moshe es ashira hazoyis bayoy mahu, vayilamda es b'nei Yisro, and the Pasuk stops. It doesn't say v'sam b'fihem. Like the Rabbani Shalom said, sima b'fihem, it doesn't say v'sam b'fihem. So a beautiful pshat from Rav Arla Belzer. To answer this, he says that his grandfather, Reb Shila, says in the Gemara Menachos, it says that just like that today, nowadays we don't have Karbanas, so the Gemara Menachos says that when you say the Pashas of Karbanas, it's Ki'ilu Hikriv Karbanas, it's as if you, you're being mocked of all the Karbanas, and we don't even really need to actually bring Karbanas to Rabbanu Shalom, it's just saying the Tfilis, just saying the Pashas of the Karbanas is enough. So too, when we learn the parshas in Bechul Kaisai and in Ki Savai of the Ainshim and the Teichachas in the Torah, we develop a Shmira just by learning them that the Rabbani Shalom gives us a Shmira that none of these Ainshim, none of these Teichachas, none of the Machlis should come on us. Rabbi Allah continues that his father, Sachadav, learned this into this Pasuk of Atakis Vilachem. It's called a shira, even though it's a, it's teichacha. Even the teichacha part of the Torah is called a shira. The Baruch Shalom called it a shira. The lambda is bnei Yisrael. The lambda is bnei Yisrael, and sima b'fiya means it should stay just that. It should stay only bepet and not bepoil. It says sima b'fiya. It should stay. The Baruch Shalom told Moshe Rabbeinu put it in their mouths and not and make sure that it doesn't happen bepoil. For this reason, says Rabbanon, that's why. When Moshe Rabbeinu was actually writing the Sefer Torah, by the Ksiv, by the few psukim later, and it says, by Ilam des B'nei Yisrael, it doesn't say, Vesam B'fihem. Because it wasn't a Tzivah from the Rabbani Shalom to, to actually teach them Torah. It was more of a Sgula that the Rabbani Shalom was telling Moshe Rabbeinu, if they write Sefer Torah and they learn Torah, that should be a Sgula that it would stay B'fihem and not B'poil. My bracha to Huda is that from here on, this Sefer Torah that you're going to be laning from every week in Eretz Hashem should be Megan on you and spare you of all the hardships and you should have a refuah shalem and bakarif. It's unbelievable that we actually got to this point so quickly. We have to make a special bracha shachiyanu v'kimanu v'yonu l'azman hazeh. It wasn't so long ago, I was sitting with Yehuda Leib in the shul a few months ago and I told you Leib that the shul has to have a new state for Tyra. And he has to somehow get it. <laughs> and he said that he's not doing it. There's nothing to talk about. It's too much money. He's not even thinking about it. So I told you in the late that there's nothing to talk about. We're having a meeting. And we're going to sit down and figure out how to get a safe attire. So we had a meeting. And we sat down. And you heard the late start writing down three four names of people that he could maybe ask for money. And I see it's not going anywhere. I tell you the lame, okay, that's it. We're going to make a Seder, we're going to learn Shar B'tachin and Chayim Salvavis. Because when the rabbi gets stuck, he pulls out the Chayim Salvavis, the Shar B'tachin, and that really works. And Baruch Hashem, we learned together Chayim Salvavis for many weeks, and Baruch Hashem, 
The first one we have to thank tonight is the Rebbeinu Shalom. It's Mama Shapala. We have a whole room full of friends, family, supporters that came so fast together to support this. So we have to thank the Rebbeinu Shalom. It was Mama Shanais and Shemayim that happened so quickly. And we're all going to get chizik from Yehuda Leis Betachen. Because I told you, the lay, he told me that he wants to do this mitzvah. If he would have the money, he would do it himself. So I told him, when a yid wants to do a mitzvah, if a yid has a mind to do a mitzvah, Hashem will help him. And Baruch Hashem, Yehud Leis Betachen got us here. So it's mechazik us. Everybody has in life things they want and they need. Take out a chayus of all the shayar betachen and start learning. And you'll see much success. And if it doesn't work, go to Yehuda Leib, will explain you why. So the first one we have to thank is the Rebbe Yishlam, who brought this nice so fast to bring a beautiful Sevatayr to our shul. The second one we have to thank is obviously the entire Blonder and Minzer families, especially Rebbe Yisrael and his wife that helped our president, Yehuda Leib, always the president of our shul, always backing him and helping him. And the entire and the Spacha, the Minzer and the, and the, and the, and the Blonder families who came together, and always back you with the lay and help them out through all his endeavors in life. The next one that we have to thank is the entire Weiss and Zakram families who are always helping you with the lay every single day of his life. They're backing him and they're helping him. And they do unbelievable things to you with the lay. And we have to give a special yeshakayat to them. Fourth, we have to thank all the people here tonight, tonight or today that came together to back you with the lay and to give him support and chizik and money. And it's not always easy to take out money from the bank account. We just laying Tasha's para that the guy who's helping everyone else become tar, he becomes tummy. So the lesson is when you're helping other people, sometimes you have to give up something to help other people. The guy who's tar everybody else is very nice, but he becomes tummy. The Torah is teaching you that sometimes you have to help other people. It's not always easy. You have to go out of your way. And Taka, we have to thank everyone that went out of the way to help you with the lake. The fifth person we have to hate, thank tonight, who I have to thank tonight, is Yehuda the lake. And it's not for the Seva Torah. Because the Seva Torah we said before was from the Abishnah. So why do I have to thank you with the lake? Because I opened the shul on East Third Street. And opening a shul is very hard. There's a lot of details. I didn't even know what, how many details go into it. But the details never end. You have to raise the money. You have to make sure the coffee is in the coffee room. You have to make sure, you have to make sure the garbage is taken out. You have to make sure the save is mission to the right place. Every single detail is very, very hard work. But Baruch Hashem, I come to shul, and I look at Yehuda Leib. And Yehuda Leib gives me such a smile that he's so happy with the shul all the work I do is already Kadai. And then you the lady gives him this wink with his eye. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. A special wink, and he says with the wink of his eye how happy he is being in the shul. And then it's all the work I do is already Kadai. So I have to give a special shakach to you the lady for giving me that chizik to go by to appreciate the shul and he enjoyed it so much. And I hear already that he doesn't like going away for Shabbos anymore because he likes to stay in the show. Achanasa Seva Taira is a tremendous Hamsha Chadairis. It brings together, when you have Achanasa Seva Taira, it brings together the memories of 2,000 years of Achanasa Seva Taira, 2,000 years of Gaulus, when Klai Yisrael went through the darkest times and the best times. And we always held on to the Tyra. The Achanasa Seva Tyra symbolizes when the men, the women, and the children come out of the houses and they all dance with the Tyra. And you think back, all the Achanasa Seva Tyra is every single generation, whether it was the hardest, darkest times or was the best times, Clyde Stroll always loved the Tyra, kissed the Tyra, and danced with the Tyra. 75 years ago, the world was dark, and nobody thought there's going to be another Hanasa Seva Tyra. Things were very, very bad. Abu Lamaisa, even in the darkest times, Kleiser held on to the Seva Tyra. There was a, recently, there was a Tisha B'Av video that someone told me over, 
there was one interview they had of this woman who she she when she was in the concentration camp her room was right next to the gas chamber and she said that when she was laying in her bed she always heard every single every single while she always heard the cry of Shema Yisrael because the Yidden in the chamber right next door when they were being killed they're always saying Shema Yisrael so she always heard Shema Yisrael every, every so often when they were killing the Yidden she heard Shema Yisrael the Yidden in the darkest times held on to the Sefer Tyra now we have in America we have a different Nisayinus now we live in the good times some people say that the Nisayin of America is even harder than the Nisayin of hard times we have the Nisayinus of technology we have the Nisayinus of all kind of pulls away from Yiddishkeit. But we find that Klai Yisrael is, 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 is grabbing on to the Tyra, even in America, when you have all these Taivas and all these Geshmaka Gashmias, Klai Yisrael is holding on to the Tyra like never before. This past Friday, I was collecting for a certain Nachnas Eskala, Rabbi always has to be collecting for something, and I went to a certain house a rich house to collect money and I come in over there and there's a few Gavira sitting around, it's Friday morning and they're sitting around, sitting and learning Mom is sitting and learning I couldn't believe it he had people that are so rich they could go on every single vacation they could go to every hotel they're sitting and learning because Tyra they know is the most is the most geschmack thing in the world in this world we have now in America we have people that have money they're rich and they have everything, and still they realize that Kihem Chayenu, that the Torah is, there's nothing else besides the Torah. And they were sitting there learning, and I started talking to them and learning, it was unbelievable. And they told me they learn a few hours every single morning. Mom is amazing. They told me they're very, very wealthy people. And it's coming to show that people realize we have everything in America, we have all the Gashmias. Oh, well, nice, what does it all boil down to? It all boils down to nothing. When you have the Torah, when you have Kim Chayenu, when you have the Geshmak, when you have the Gemara, that's, that's when you have life. What is it going to help you go on another vacation? What's it going to help you buy a better steak? When you have the Torah, you have everything. We just was Zaycha now to Achnos the Sefer Torah. Achnos the Sefer Torah, you take the Sefer Torah and you put it in the Aron Kaidish. Now, if you leave the Sefer Torah in the Aron Kaidish, and that's where it stops, the Gemara says that if you put the Torah in the Karen Zavis, that's the worst thing. Because the Torah has to come part of you. A person that goes to Achnos Sefer Torah should realize that Achnos Sefer Torah is not the end. The Achnos Sefer Torah is the beginning. The Achnos Sefer Torah is the time when you should start thinking, how am I going to get close to Talmud Chachamim? How am I going to get another Shir? How am I going to get Shaykhus to Torah? If the Torah is Menachas for Kevin Zavis, if the Torah is sitting in the Aaron Kaidish, that's not a good thing. That's Torah Menachas for Kevin Zavis, the Gemara says that's not the Karsis. What you have to do by Achnos Sefer Torah is think, how can I get another Shear in my shul? How can I add more Torah to my life? And how can I get closer to Talmud Chachamim? If you have such thoughts, the Gemara says that Hanibab liked to destroy the Samuel for Sefer Torah and they don't stand for Talmud Chacham. So you see from here, the Achnos Sefer Torah is the beginning, it's not the end. The Achnos Sefer Torah is a time we're supposed to think to ourselves, how we can get closer to Torah? How can we get closer to the Rabbi Yisrael? So we should tackle all these Zaycha, now the Achnos Sefer Torah, to think of ways how we could mechab Torah more, how we can get closer to Torah and do more mitzvahs. And that way, we'll tackle, utilize the Achnos Sefer Torah, and we'll tackle the Yitzchot, the Yehudalei, I'll be a schutz for his grandparents. I'll be a schutz for the Gantz and Mishpacha. I'll be a chizek at Torah. And Gantz and Klaitz will have a Leah from this Achnas Sefer Torah.